first slide a picture so where in a classroom so here you see a classroom situation where we have different learners see the problems the students are rising see some student they say that i can speak spanish or english or language like canada or any it may be anything and some here yeah, he knows the name of every state uh, capital uh, a it should be and then some student he reads at the sixth grade level and another one student he loves baseball and some student he can't multiply the fives that means fifth table or he don't know that and some student is with the problem of dyslexia and some students are there who can't complete their writing assignments within the time so likewise uh, we also have students with uh, different uh, learning abilities like they some speak english some they do they can't speak english or some uh, although they can uh, understand english but they can't speak speak english we can see the students who are gifted slow learner average and some students who like maths and some who are not able to uh, learn maths or they don't like maths at all so here what these pictures shows what is your interpretation on this picture just for a two minutes i want to have interaction with you regarding these two pictures what it says because you are all uh, including me we are all teacher we are going to teach the class uh, classroom situation with such kind of learners what is your interpretation and as a teacher how you are going to meet the needs of these students just for a while any one or two of you can uh, interact with me for a while for two minutes what it says me, yes this picture is about uh, a different uh, learners maybe the individual difference differences uh, in, okay fine in good class, mm -hmm. we meet different uh, students like uh, slow learners average mm -hmm. high achievers mm -hmm. so each individual is different and they are uh, uh, learning uh, capacity learning style everything differs so uh, keeping in minds of these different learners so teacher we uh, mostly focus on the average teaching yes uh, as a teacher in general what we are going to do where if you are going to concentrate only towards the gifted we are going to neglect the other part like slow learners average or something if we concentrate on slow learner we are again we are going to neglect this paper so in general what we are going to do our teaching will be according to the needs of the average level okay we, in all the uh, situation we are going to consider the average like npc what we are going to for so here i have put a question no, on one point mm. okay. yeah Let's, the gifted uh, slow learner and average these are the judgments that we uh, give and we label it them so we have our own judgment criteria and label it mm. Mm. whether i speak english and i like math the two figures that actually talks about the facts in the classroom that we need to focus on rather than a judgmental yes. i will come to that one that's why i asked you to just to go through the pictures and i want to ask your interpretation what how you see the difference in the interpretation of yourself and the previous speaker so by seeing that picture you have uh, interpreted that in different way again that shows you are that Yeah, uh, you are also different in some other aspects. Okay, so here I have put a question mark in the place of title. So here uh, you told that it is individual differences, and you, you have we have to instead of judging based upon their learning capacities, you told like I speak English, I like maths. So here, as a teachers, what we have to think is here. Uh, in the classroom how i can meet the needs of these students so again here i had given a situation like in a classroom 
so the bell is about to ring or the bell uh, it uh, signals the end of the class but still some children are there who are left with doubts and questions and while others are bored because the last hour what they have spent on the material they already understood that means what we told in the class so here we have different learners their needs are different their interests are different their capacities are different so here we have a new kind of learning a new kind of instruction nowadays in the field of education which is considered as a trend so that is what nothing but personalized learning so here personalized learning see the personalized the term itself personalized what it is indicating personalized for each person for each and every individual was first for example what danya has show, told so according to her need according to her view she has viewed that she has interpreted that picture and maria she has interpreted that picture in her own way based upon her capacity see here itself your capacities are different your interests are different your way of seeing the picture is different so according to that views according to your attitudes your uh, interest and capacities we can make our or we can personalize the kind of learn or whatever the learning experiences we are going to provide our students we can personalize it so that is a new trend in the field of education that is personalized learning so today in this session i am going to discuss about personalized learning so we know that uh, all uh, we are not um, alike that means we are different from our appearance culture or ideologies and these differences are not limited only to uh, some ex, uh, to the culture or language or something it is present in the learning also and each student has their own abilities which are different and we can't compare them then what is this personalized learning so it is an educational environment and curriculum that revolves around each individual student's needs and abilities so according to the needs and abilities of the each student what i told in the first slide itself that is we have students who learn very slowly who can complete their assignment we have students who can speak english who can't understand the english or who can uh, learn maths or who loves maths or uh, there are some students uh, they think that maths is a difficult subject like that so personalized learning is an educational environment and it is a kind of curriculum that is formulated or revolves around the each individual student's needs and abilities so where learning is tailored to the preferences and interests of various learners for example if you want to stitch a dress for you you can't uh, stitch the dress uh, to the size of your friend you are going to stitch the dress according to your size and according to your wishes that means to what uh, like you was maybe design of the sleeves or neck or if you come to the pant or shirt uh, you want to uh, tailor it according to your needs likewise in the learning also here we can tailor the learning according to the preferences and interests of the various learners and it is based to a student's unique needs unique needs that means each and every student every learner is unique in their own way and according to that unique abilities we can tailor the learning that is personalized learn and our academic goals curriculum and content as well as method and pace all vary in the personalized learning environment that means the curriculum or the content which you are going to teach to a student a can't teach to the student b so here it uh, is nothing but where our academic goals our curriculum and content each and everything the method and also pace of learning it varies 
and then it involves the students in the creation of learning activities not only providing the learning experiences or different kind of content to the students it also involves student in the creation of learning activities that means according to their preferences learning preferences or uh, interest our ability students can create their learning activities that is also possible in case of personalized learning here instead of what at present our traditional education or curriculum is like where it uh, education wants to bring something to the that is it wants to bring some changes in the behavior of the students but here the personalized learning it is something that occurs as a result of what the student is doing here uh, education is not going to do anything for the child okay, but the child or the learner is going to do something to the uh, uh, education with the intent of creating engaging students who have truly learned how to learn that means on their own they are going to learn that is to learn and here teaches students to manage their own learning control and ownership of it whatever the learning activities they are going to have they will be the owner of that learning activity and they have control over that activity in case of the regular or traditional classroom what happens where the teacher is the owner on the teaching method and teacher is going to take control over that where the students are not able to make any kind of changes they don't have opportunities to make changes in that learning so here this personalized learning it requires one to one tutoring for every student based on their interest preferences needs and base so it is considered as a method instructional method which incorporates adaptive technology so here mainly the learn the technologies which are uh, related with the learning the some adaptive technologies that is involved are related with the personalized learning and it helps all students to achieve high levels of learning so today because of this pandemic situation we have number of learning apps okay and that learning apps and some technologies what we say mobile learning e learning they are all are, are personalized one that means using that apps or using that technology the students can learn on their own and in their own speed so that is the concept behind personalized learning so here if we have a look at this uh, personalized learning so it is a kind of innovative teaching where it is already i told one to one teacher and students interaction that is i told that the need interest ability of each student is different and unique here the teacher and student will be uh, the ratio will be one is to one where the teacher and student interact action will be one to one the teacher is going to interact individually personally with the each and every student and the second point what we can see here is rich self faced curriculum rich where the curriculum is uh, enriched one it is a uh, rich in its content and self faced means the student he can learn he or she can learn in their own space in their own pace the curriculum is self paced one here we are, there is no uh, like what is a restriction like the syllabus within this one hour of period this much of syllabus has to be covered or within this semester this much of content has to be covered like that so it is a self paced curriculum and then this uh, personalized learning it can it is available around the clock anywhere anytime access that means here around the clock means 24 into 7 or anywhere that means by sitting in your home or in your school or anywhere if you are working from there also and anytime you can access the learning experiences and then 
this personalized learning it is a technology that enriches the learning experience that means already i told that where the personalized learning is related with the our adaptive technology where the technology enriches this personalized learning and learning environments that adapt to student needs it is a kind of learning where the learning environment is according to the student needs and then frequent skill checks i uh, parent partnership parent partnership means here not only the teachers or the students are responsible for the learning even we can have the partnership of the parents also you can see the parent partnership in the uh, personalized learn and another one frequent skill checks that guide progress that means frequently at each and every uh, phase of the completion of the learning the students can check their uh, progress that means based upon their progress they can proceed to the next level of learning and then here what this needs references and goals means personalized learning is based or it is according to the needs references and goals of the learner so that is uh, the some uh, view points about the personalized learning and if we come to see the what are the goals of this personalized learning mainly it ensures equity it raises the achievement and inspires student agency and choose equity means already i told that in the first question we told all uh, as a teacher in the classroom uh, usually regularly what we are going to do we are going to concentrate or we are going to teach uh, to meet average level of students so but here in case of personalized learning it ensures the equity mean where even a student who, are, who is uh, at the lower level of learning like who is at the are considered as a slow learners they even they can also gain a self confidence that they can even they can also learn the concept what their friends have learned so it ensures the equity and it drives the achievement it helps to enhance or increase the achievement and it inspires the student agency it means it is a kind of inspiration to students where students already i told they have a control over that learning and they have <clears throat> uh, they are the owners that means they can uh, inspire the student agency so that is a view about the personalized learning then why this do we want this personalized learning in our classrooms then what is the reasons behind that uh, do we uh, require this so if we see that one the first question what uh, comes in front of us is that where modern classrooms are more diverse than ever already i told that our classroom is a diverse in nature where we uh, have to consider the needs of the students like uh, the students with physical and mental differences nowadays we know that we have inclusive education the concept of inclusive education also where in the general schools we are going to have the students from the physical differences like mental differences and then we have students from different linguistic backgrounds and we have students from migrant families also and apart from this we have broad range of academic abilities what already i told highly intellectual like that and instead of trying here in such kind of classroom that is the classroom which is diverse in nature what can we do here uh, as a teacher what we are going to we are going to try the erase the differences we want to erase the differences but that is not possible instead of that we should be leveraging them by tailoring learning experiences to the unique needs of the each students as there is a diversity in the abilities or in the physical differences and mental differences are there here we uh, have to tailor the learning experiences that means whatever the learning experiences you want to provide to the students that should be according to the unique needs of the each students so that is the first reason why we have to have this personalized learning that means why should we shift the second one where 
this personalized learning is replacing the path of uh, uh, replacing jobs. So, for example, what is happening in the present 21st century, if you go for a job in a company or in an uh, organization or in a, any other institution, whatever may be your degree, you may be a first rank holder or a gold medal like that. First, what they ask, first they will uh, look for some potential candidates with flexible soft skills, technological literacy, knowledge across the multiple content areas, unique combinations of experience. And we know that the degrees and diplomas are no longer be the all and end all. It is not the everything and it is not the end all. So here what I told, although uh, because, let us take one example that I'm a degree, um, I have a degree of MAC, MED, PhD, and uh, each uh, still I have many more degrees. And we have, even I have a gold medal in case of um, at my PG degree, everything. But if I don't know about this technological aspects, for example, if you go for an interview in an institution, first they will ask, do you know the computer? That means, you know the do you have the knowledge of computer literary, computer literary skills like that? If you say no, uh, literally to some extent, they may um, lag behind in selecting you. So flexible soft skills, soft skills, that means uh, your communication skills or interpersonal skills or adaptability like that. So, and then knowledge across the multiple content areas. So you can't say I'm from the field of arts. I don't know anything about the science. And I know maths only. I can't teach the, or I, can't, uh, I, I don't know about the science. So here as a uh, teacher or as a, person you should have multiple knowledge of multiple content to some extent although yes of course i have in-depth knowledge in my subject in apart in addition to that i should have some knowledge from other areas also and unique combinations of experience you should have a combinations of experience when this 2020 or this 21st century is expecting all these skills just a simple classroom or a classroom with uh, the teaching of the teacher is uh, with uh, or uh, which is meeting the needs of average learning only how can we expect a uh, employer who can uh, stay or who can stay stable in, in the 2020 or in the 21st century so here where with career paths becoming increasingly personalized our classrooms need to follow to suit that increasing career paths. That is the second reason where we can find out that personalized learning is essential one. Then second one is it encourages the students to learn autonomously. Autonomously means on their own they can learn. So it nurtures a mindset for autonomous learning where the students, they can't depend on others for their learning. On their own, they can learn. And here the students learn at a pace suited to their personal level of ability, reducing the need to follow the class. That means what uh, the teacher is going to say, that the student may not be able to understand. So where the student can learn on his own pace, if he uh, or if the teachers or others are going to support this personalized learning. And students, they can set short and long-term goals for their own learning and giving them full ownership of their own, uh, their progress. That means they are responsible or they are the owner of their progress. For example, in simply in the family itself, we for uh, we can take the examples of our children itself. Where if as a parent I am going to pressure my child to sit and learn, sit and read, sit and write, what he or she may say, oh, for five minutes they can't sit 
and after five minutes their uh, concentration or attention will be diverted so just for the pressure of the parents they may sit but if you are going to make them to responsible for their learning so they can sit on their own for example see what happens if in the classroom the teacher is going to give some home assignments to the children if that teacher is very strict and in the tomorrow morning itself the teacher is going to ask about that home assignments the children they are their own they sit and they complete their home assignments where they take uh, the responsibility for their progress so likewise in the personalized learning what happens it makes the child fully responsible or fully owner of their progress and it is tailored to individual student interest abilities encouraging them to start creating a path of personal development that means it creates a path for them for their personal development so instead of following the paths or instead of following others they can create their own paths for their personal development so uh, here and moreover where another one reason we can see is this learning is not uh, it is not confined only to the school hours that is after the completion of the school hours it can be made online or it should be available to the students online and the students can work whenever there is an internet connection that means after the school hours it strengthens the relationship and in a personalized classroom student teacher relationships run even deeper that means as i told there is face to face interaction one to one interaction is there the student teacher relationships run even deeper that means we can have a good relationship between the teacher and student and here uh, as i told that here we are going to consider the needs and abilities of the each student here it starts with the knowing each students so as a teacher in the classroom we don't know about each and every student what is their needs what is their interest and abilities there are some students who comes and meet teachers in the free time and they express uh, their views or they are going to share their ideas with you but there are some students who withdraw them themselves they are shy in nature they can't share but here uh, but in case of personalized learning what happens here it gives an opportunity to the teachers to know each students and for students this classroom that is personalized classroom is one in which they feel valued as an individual valued as an individual that means where there is individual attention is given to each students the students feel that even we are also individuals the teacher is going to value us also like that they have a feeling of value that means valued as an individual and then for teachers if we come to the part of the teachers where it is a best part of their job making the transition from instructor to mentor confident and trusted guide where the teacher is a mentor and a trusted guide in case of personalized learning so therefore these are some of the reasons why we have to have or why it should be uh, have personalized learning in our education system and then uh, i already told that it is according to needs of the students and all that so here this personalized learning it can be conceptualized in different ways or it has different aspects like it is not only the personalization of the learning or learning experiences it is the personalization of content personalization of pace and progress and personalization of the process in these three different ways we can personalize the learning personalization of the content means as the term itself is saying that way we can engage the students with content topics and areas that are of particular interest to them where it is uh, where the students they can think on their uh, that means uh, where the content and topics of study they are provided according to the interest of the students and then pace and progress where students progress through the content and curriculum levels at their own pace that means they can learn on their own uh, that means in their own speed 
and then process where the instructional approaches and learning environments that varies based on the students needs and interest means the teaching learning process we can adopt different kinds of learning approaches that is the personalization of process and apart from that way this personalization it also includes some tenets some factors of where learning is competency based so nowadays in our uh, present uh, system of education that too especially in the primary level what is that competency based teaching is there where that learning is also competency based where students move on uh, once they have demonstrated mastery of a concept if the student has learned one concept then only they can move to the next concept and the second tenet is that where learning is flexible it is not restricted to traditional schooling structures or timetables that is learning is flexible and then students are encouraged to demonstrate agency and take uh, the level of ownership over their learning journey and students strengths interest passions are incorporated into their learn where students can have their own interest they can incorporate their strengths and passion to their learning so in this way we can conceptualize the personalization of learning in different ways the main three areas or aspects are content phase and progress and the process some tenets of this personalized learning are the competency based where the learning is flexible and where the students are the owners of the learning and we can in students can incorporate their strengths interests and passions to their learning so then when and where or at what level we can have this personalized learning so here it can be used for all ages and learners it is not meant only for the primary level or secondary or higher education level that is at all the level it is effective when students have voice for their own education so here if we consider the primary school so it is possible to provide an element of choice in their own learning i had given one example here uh if you want to Mm. teach the concept of addition and subtraction what we are going to do as a teacher in the traditional classroom we are going to have a board and we write some numbers like 3 then put a mark plus 4 and we make students to learn that what 3 uh, plus 4 but here in case of personalized learning at the primary level so here by building an understanding of what they need to achieve their learning goals for example if you ask student that uh, if you want to add 3 to the number 4 how will you add that you can ask them so where she had given one example asking children to find different ways to calculate a math problem so where the student can come uh, come out with, the, with his own ways how he can add that 4 plus 3 so where he can work in different way and think about the method that works best for them so on their own they will decide yes this method is suitable for me to add 4 plus 3 so at the primary level that is a kind of personalized learning environment which we can have and then in the intermediate years where we can start keeping reflection portfolios of their work for example students they can reflect on school work they think they do well that means i think in the bed level now we have reflective teaching and reflective journal writing is also there so here the students one example what i am giving at the intermediate level uh, what kind of personalized learning we can have where students can reflect on school work that means they think they do well whatever may be the teaching or method of teaching in the classroom the teacher is te teaching the students they can have a reflection that which uh, is good for them 
and which school work they enjoy doing what kind of school work they enjoy and which school work they find difficult and wish to improve and how they learn best or what their goals for school work in the current term and how they will know if they have achieved their goals like this they can have a reflection portfolios in case of intermediate level and then in the secondary level where to some extent the students are matured where they can create and maintain their own learning paths that means to achieve uh, their academic and career goals map their decision making in relation to their goals with a particular focus on post secondary goals that means they can create their own learning plans and they can also adopt continuous self assessment for learning through personal portfolios personal portfolios means they can have their portfolios uh, today what i want to learn tomorrow what i want to learn in future what i want to do if i want to learn this today what should i have to do in what way i have to continue my learning and then on their own they can continuously assess themselves for learning through personal portfolios which are cumulative record of their work and behind that also we can encourage students and teachers can choose to alternative educational approaches and instructional methods they may give students more personal choice that means apart from giving the traditional classroom that students can provide some different educational approaches or instructional approaches to students to learn beyond that and students are organized can be organized into small groups and paired with a consistent team of teachers who get to know the students and their learning needs well that means mentorship program is there nowadays in Uh, all the higher educational institutions i think you know about that for a nac assessment it is one of the main criteria where we have to maintain mentor and mentorship uh, program in each and every institution even that is also a kind of example and then where students meet with their teachers mentors in school to discuss their academic social and post secondary planning issues that is the Hmm. at the secondary level so uh here uh, so these are uh, that is that means at all the levels we can have the uh this personalized learn where it is not only for the primary school or the secondary or the higher education and not only for the uh, particular kind or particular category of learners for all categories of learners and for all ages and for all levels of education we can have the personalized learn is it is boring okay no ma'am no, no ma'am no. so here i want to give some examples to you uh, i think you have gone through a movie tare zameen par is there no tare zameen par so yes, in that uh, the child it is the main highlight of that movie where nishan uh, he lags behind in his uh, all uh, classroom achievements like uh, he doesn't know maths or english here but in the general classroom what happens the teacher they are not able to identify what is his problem like that for that what they suggest to their parents that he is a special child put him to some special schools like that and based on that what their parents they are going to put that child in a residential school also again in the same in the school also the same thing repeats you know that one so but what happens in that uh, school a teacher comes over there that he is the person who is responsible for his progress where he identifies what the problem of that children he identifies the need interest of that child and according to that he encourages that child so then the child achieves and he comes uh, stood in in the first place in the school so i think you know about that what happens there where 
again we, in that we can see the personalized learning where but they didn't name it as a personalized learning but uh, it is related with uh, some learning difficulties but uh, the teacher the approach whatever the teacher follows in that that is an example for the personalized learning where he takes uh, he considers the interest need and problem of that child and according to that he creates learning paths for that child so that is a, also a, an example for the personalized learn so if we come to see how does this personalized learning works how it works here there are uh, four models which are widely used so there are some schools which use uh, the learner profiles that means based on the learner profiles they are going to create uh, the follow the personalized learning and then we have schools that use personalized learning paths and then we have schools that use competency based progression and then we have schools using flexible learning environments so the first one is that way the schools which use learner profiles means where in this type of school they keep up to date record of the um, deep understanding of each students strengths needs motivations progress and goals that means here they are going to create the personalized learning environment based upon the learners profile learners profile means for example if i take my example pushpa then what are the my strengths what are my needs my motivations what is my progress and whatever the goals i have they will keep a learner uh, a profile of my that is like pushpa and then these profiles are also updated for more often than in a standard report card like it is not like a report card but it is a standard form where, where this profile is updated regularly and these detailed updates help teachers to make decision to positively impact student learning so here what the example had given tare is in but here you can see the teacher goes through the uh put uh, sorry profile uh, learner profile of that child nisha where based on that profile he makes decision to help that child so likewise based on the learner profile here teacher can make decision positively impact the student learning and this learner profile also helps students to keep track of their own progress not only to the teachers it also helps the students to keep there are uh, to know about their progress and to the teacher student and in many schools the parent a way to know if they need to change their learning method or make changes to goals so uh, it is not only for the teachers or students in some schools even it also involves the parents why way even parents also know some ways how to teach their child for example in your families itself if you have your kids uh, the teacher in the school they may teach in their own way and the child may come to home and that child may interact uh, it may say something i didn't understood what the teacher has told in the classroom but if you are going to teach that your uh, sorry your kid in your own way that child may learn so as a parent also you know what a kind of learning method is essential for your child and you can suggest that to the teacher also that is the one uh, model on which this personalized learning works and then the model where that uses the profiles of the learners that is the one model and then the second one is the personalized learning paths where in this type where the school it helps the students to customize a learning path that is based upon their progress motivation and goals that means today i have learned some concept related to the personalized learning then what should i do next what is my goal so according to that goal the school helps me to uh learn or to understand the concept of personalized learning in future or further what should i learn so that is the second model where here 
it creates a student schedule based on the weekly update of the academic progress of students and each student's schedule is unique and here the teacher may use mixed uh, learning methods like project based learning to a small group of peers independent work on certain skills or one to one tutoring with a teacher so that is the second model where schools can use personalized learning paths and third model is competency based progression so where the school continually assess, continuously assess students to monitor their progress towards specific goals i think you know about the mastery learning and then competency based learning so in the primary level what is happening in that is in the karnataka primary education level where the students that is uh, the teachers are provided with some competencies for the if the student has to be progressed from first standard to the second student standard the child has to achieve or the child should have gained some mastery or some competences there is a list of some competences otherwise again the teacher has to teach that child till that child achieves the competency so that like that is uh, like this competency based progression where continuously it assess the students to monitor their progress towards the goals where this makes students what they need to master and that competencies may be some skills knowledge or mindsets like developing resilience sorry resilience and then development of communication skills okay reduction of bullying nature like that may be different and then students it gives options to students how and when to demonstrate their mastery whether the students have achieved that competency or not and we can give options to students how and when they want to demonstrate that competency so here um one example i had given a student might work with a teacher to give certain math skill into an internship at a retail store that means you are not restricting the student that uh, where uh, he has to demonstrate his uh, learning or competency in the classroom within the classroom itself or in the school itself like that but here our teacher here had taken example of the teacher educator teacher trainee is way a student can view that is certain math skills how we can view how we can incorporate math skills into an internship program at a retail store that is one uh, example where it allows the students to demonstrate their competencies and their masteries so that is the third model here we are not going to stress or emphasize on the test and getting a pass or fail instead continuous learning and many chances to show their knowledge we provide opportunities and chances to show the knowledge one second so here and then another one uh, model is the where flexible learning environments where it adapts the environment students learning based on how they learn best that means according uh, that means i told that which school work the students enjoy which school work they don't like like that based upon their uh, choice the learning environment itself is changed we can uh, change we can maintain flexibility in the learning environment like physical setup of the class how the school day is structured and how the teachers are allocated that is the another one model which we can use for the personalized learning like we can have small group instruction and then we can redesign the teachers to use the space time and resources in the classroom like that a uh, one example i had given that is uh, how we can have the personalized learning where a uh, student a just i named that student as a as teacher 
first what you have to do you should know the following information you know about that child or the student that is his or her class his previous knowledge abilities interests needs weaknesses strong points etc and then the content what he knows he, or what kind of content that child wants to uh, or that child prefers like uh, it may be video text or interactive games or video content rather than simple content just giving a notes or a textbook or some other reference book the child may not learn where instead of that whether the child prefers to have the content in the form of video text or interactive games like that and then uh, you should have the knowledge of the student like whether the student enjoys using technology sometimes he may use mobile devices in his work so these variables that means learner profiles may vary or it may have has some more variables apart from just i have mentioned two three apart from that uh, the child may have different variables also after knowing this uh what we can do based on these parameters as a teacher or a learning instructor you should create a specific learning for path for that child or for that student for that student you should have some uh learning path what kind of learning path i can provide to this child according to his um, abilities needs interests and then what kind of content he wants to have like that and then here the i told uh, intellect based on his intellectual ability interest or need whether he is comfortable with the high level educational content or other and experience connecting uh, the information to what the teacher would know that one what is the previous experience and what the teacher knows and then preferred content type whether video interactive games or some other mobile games like that and then delivery we have to deliver that one and then student can engage with the content that is what he have provided according to his needs on mobile devices or any other technological aids then you can give opportunity for the students to demonstrate his mastery so in this way it works uh, that is the personalized learning works so it has seven basic principles like flexible phasing i told varied learning strategies that means multiple learning modalities like uh, don't stick on to only one um, strategy of teaching you can have a combination of learning strategies or learning modalities just in time direction that means available that instruction should be available to students regardless of the availability of an in person teacher if you are not available you should make some alternative arrangement to uh, students to provide the information that is like through your whatsapp or through your uh, voice mail or through your video like that and then co planning uh, learning where students parents and community are involved in the process of planning the learning activities and then mastery based assessment students drive the curriculum rather than the other way around that is mastery based assessment based upon their mastery over the concept or the things what they have learned we have to assess them choice and voice where students get to express their learning styles and preferences that means according to the learning styles and preferences the students can select their learn um, path uh, path of learning and demonstrating learning students can demonstrate competence using both traditional and technological tools so these are the seven principles lying behind the uh this personalized learning so what the technology be, uh, is whether the technology is related with the personalized learning so in the previous classes uh, i think you have came through different kinds of technological learning like uh, gamification artificial intelligence whatever you have came across so all they are on in some example of this personalized learning way tools uh, many tools are available and uh, while from the starting itself i even had given some examples uh, different kinds of learning apps are there which provides opportunities for students to uh, come or uh, to learn on their own 
and then uh, something in the section of netflix recommended for you it is uh, some kind of activity artificial intelligence assistant is another one and then flexible learning paths natural language processing there are some of the uh, technological aids which are related with this personalized learning then what are the potentialities of this personalized learning where uh, isn't widely used in schools at still whatever i told uh, till now so that is not widely used so but uh, many aspects still need to be explored but this uh, approach is found to be useful because where the kids or the child it supports the child to work on weaknesses and a customized path that engages their interest and help already i told it uh, feeds or it uh, encourages their interest and abilities that means they can own their learning and then give students to chance to build their self advocacy skill and they encourage them to speak up about what interests them and allows them to be equal partners in their learning experience that means teachers are not only the partners even they are also equal partners the risk apart from that potentialities we have some risks also where teachers this is the main risk where teachers might not have enough inclusion training to make this approach accessible to all students now uh, as the because of this pandemic situation most of the teachers are now trying to learn about the technology how to do the online classes or like that but still if you come to personalized learning where it involves the technology most of the teachers are not trained and then uh, the teachers might not know how to support kids with executive functioning of the issues and they don't know how to track competencies or analyze the kinds of students data some research evidences are also there which has shown that although this personalized learning is useful and uh, potential and important in developing or catering to the needs and abilities of the students uh, but uh, so some research studies they have shown that what are the risks or weak or the limitations of this personalized learning where uh, this uh, used still not freely available on the way but for use by the large community of educators where although it is effective it is not available for the large community of educators and then adaptive technologies in the field of education uh, they are effective in small lab experiments with a limited number of students they are still waiting for being presented to the large community of educators and then some study suggests that students benefit from the engagement with this activities but there are some small scale studies undertaken with the specific groups of students by educators who are particularly well versed in first activities and have sufficient expertise in ict that means it is uh, done with the specific group of students and educators who are well versed in the personalized learning activities and have expertise in ict but what about the other teachers who are not expert in ict they don't know about this and uh, not done on all other students and the big problem is the e learning system where e learning system present the same material to all learners and it takes more time the time commitment made was worth the effort that question also arises before us and all educators would have the time to come with personalizing responses for individual students that we have to think what happens in pares and in per where the teachers could have recognized them but nobody is not interested and they don't want to spend time the mm, time to commit to this approach and then all educators would believe this approach to be deserving of their time this is the attitude of the teachers and then creation of this personalized learning activities itself is a complex process and then where uh, the activities to suit students learning preferences from different cultures is another challenging dimension that is we have students from different cultural background where it cannot meet it is not possible to uh, formulate or construct such kind of learning activities and then uh, it is also difficult to criteria for ad um, determine criteria for adaptation of tools for personalization and uh, although the research is going to happen over the 30 years on this aspect it these activities are still not available for using many for many students 
and some success are conducted in the lab experiments only. These are some pictures of the uh, personalized learning. Just go through these pictures and you can think that whether this kind of classrooms can we have in our Indian context? That is the question which is a big question mark before us. These are some of the personalized learning classrooms. Okay, so with the hope that let us try to uh, make an uh, effort towards uh, identifying the needs, interests, and abilities, and create the learning path according to the needs of the students and bring them in the path uh, in the progress of. Uh, Learn. That is, we can make students to progress in their learning. So now it is open for you. If you have any questions or doubts, you can. Again, I have another session by 3.45. Okay. Yes. Madam. Uh... Yes. Yes, sir, please. Madam, when we have, when we are implementing this uh, personalized learning or individualized learning, mm -hmm. uh, commonly teachers will uh, facing some challenges. Yes, of course. In Indian classrooms are very crowded and then mm -hmm. the, very difficult to practice Fine. it. So yes. how do you overcome or uh, only this kind of learning will suits for uh, where the strength is very low? That's why, sir, I am uh, I in the while discussing the challenges, I told, I even have shown the uh, pictures of the classrooms, how it will be. But as already you are only saying that it is a, uh, in our Indian context, the classroom strength is very, uh, it is large. It is not possible. And then moreover, what we want a mindset, a positive mindset of the teachers and committed teachers who can spend their time to create these uh, personalized learning activities for the students. But uh, that we can't expect. Nowadays, what is happening if the time is going towards 5.30, we are going just till 5.30, we will not wait in the schools. By five o'clock itself, we start to go. So is it is for, uh, possible for us to do that one? That is uh, one of the challenges. We can't, it is not possible. But beyond the school hours, we can make, we can help our students. Uh, as now we have uh, this technology. So like we have WhatsApp, uh, through that WhatsApp in between uh, taking some times, we can help our students to do this one. Uh, madam, uh, when we are uh, dealing in the classroom, the classroom is a uh, the heterogeneous uh, type of grouping. Yes. And the uh, group dynamics is like that. And yes. when we are referring to the uh, studies, we are referring to the studies conducted in foreign countries, not in Indian conditions. And we are accepting that in Indian conditions, this uh, type of learning is not at least uh, acceptable. Why so? Uh, we should uh, uh, sir we sh uh, that's what i mean. we should be in a condition to accept but uh, here what i told uh, if we compare our uh, system uh, with reference to the aspect of technology we are not that much of well versed like that of the foreign countries so when we using the technology so in that case what happens but still teachers we can make some uh, alternative, we can create our own learning activities, personalized learning activities according to our context, which suits our context. We can create that one. We are not but supposed to follow that. Uh, but uh. the developmental characteristics of each individual is different. Yes, it is different. Ah, it is different. <laughs> that is, it, it is a big challenge to the teachers, not only to the teacher, to the students also, to the parents also where we can't have the control over them. That is also one of the challenge we can't. But to some extent as teachers, uh, but here we can take an example of programmed instruction is there, no, sir? Yes, yes. That is a, yeah, uh, sorry, programmed instruction that we can have in our Indian context. So that is also a kind of uh, personalized learning where the students, they can learn on their own pace, but we have uh, determined some syllabus like that. They have to follow that one only. 
So, and even we cannot be um, uh, complete the syllables also. If we, we yes, sir. That's why I told we can't. That is the problem challenges we have. For that, we can think out so some alternative, uh, alternative ways. Okay. Maybe, madam, maybe, madam, we can uh, able to classify the students like uh, no, average sir. students and then the uh, above average students and then the gifted students. No. Then we can give some differentiated education like As a differentiated education is there sir but again what happens if we are going to classify and label them and we are going to give differentiated education the, then the very concept of this personalized learning itself it, uh, gets down so to avoid that one to avoid the labeling of the students to re instead of referring them to the special education instead of classifying them as uh, uh, as you told gifted and like that the personalized learning concept was evolved okay so where we are not supposed to classify them and label them for that purpose only we have this personalized learning that is fine. Any other questions? Lila, I can't, I can't hear you. A little bit louder, please. Personalized learning, madam. Huh? Involves both remediation and enrichment. Right? <laughs> so when the, our intention is to make the students who are poor in the studies to come up to the mediocre level, and again, uh, uh, if you want to make the students come to the highest level of learning, uh, even their personalized learning is involved, it is needed. And uh, for the people, for students who are very good, that, I mean, let us say, with the students, for them, enrichment, even that is personalized learning. Yeah. Personalized learning is an inseparable part of teaching program. At every stage, maybe we are not able to we we'll name it so, but uh, at every stage somehow we'll be helping them, but not maybe not in a in a systematic way. So this uh, I think for students who are very good at learning, mastery learning is also personalized learning because you have yes, to... of course it may be, Lina, but we yes. uh, what you have told that gifted students. Even if you are going to keep that in a general classroom, the gifted child is there. You told, you said that this personalized learning enhances it, yeah. where we can provide the material or the content according to his need. I told while developing that plan, where uh, according to whether uh, based upon his intellectual level, whether he wants a content of higher order thinking like that, we can provide. Yes, yes. Uh, it's there. Yes. So mastery learning, mastery learning is uh, not only for the students who told like uh, what uh, gifted student. It is for all the students. Yes. Mastery learning means even the child from the average level, from the lower level, from the height, they have to achieve some mastery. Yes. Uh, that concept is not only for the gifted group. Yes. Uh, Personalized learning is, uh, I mean, when it is practiced in groups, I don't know whether uh, this can work out very well because it is need based and it is individualized. Yes. Now, it depends on the type of uh, students we have. So, how can you give it in a group, like in a classroom situation? Maybe the teacher will be able to cater to uh, all the personal needs of their children, like uh, educational needs. So in that case also, many times the teachers will be smiling hard, but when it is taken like when we group the weaker students, weaker students and when we put all the I mean, bright students in another group, maybe this personalized level or a standard of teaching can be adopted. So it is very useful at all the stages to come out. Yes, 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 it is useful. I discussed that also. Thank you. Ma'am, uh, I have a concern because uh, uh, we um, talk about universal design of learning, UDL, UDL. Uh, which uh, creates a flexible learning environment which accommodates the learning needs of all the people. Uh, then when it comes to the personalized uh, learning, uh, we usually misunderstand or misinterpret as it's a 
though in the definition is a one to one it need not be like an individual way of doing it like a tuition or coaching yes. Yes. it's rather it is that we the teachers creating a learning space in the normal regular classroom but the learning activities that we design it caters to the needs of each individual yeah. that could be the take on from the whole discussion i feel rather than yes. either, because otherwise the challenges of india we see the less number of students in the uh, remote places in the tribal areas where one teacher manages different classes also and yes. we may see in mysore yeah. where in yeah. the number of students in the class is more so it's rather than the challenges of having more children in the classroom of course i agree to some extent but it is that we as the teachers whether we can uh, frame and design a learning environment which caters to needs of the children in the yeah, yeah i agree class. with you but is what you told one to one means here where the teacher gives attention to each students and according to their needs and interest we are going to create learning activities they are very they are different that means for student a we can give one activity and for b student we can create another activity so that time we can have a what you have told we can meet the needs of all the students yes i agree with you that because the programmed instruction the example what you give uh, probably that was based on the uh, stimulus response kind of a behavioristic mode of thinking so when it comes to udl or personalized instruction probably it is that how we can make the children utilize the resources by themselves and become self autonomous learning. about their own learning regulating their own learning so that's, that's why really in that program learning what i i mentioned only with reference to the self faced learning that means on their uh, in their own speed they can learn one aspect we can see that that is the personalized learning aspect is there in program learn okay then shall we meet in the next session okay yes ma'am yes, ma thank yes, you ma again we will meet by 345 okay thank you madam again i am coming bore agta you feel bored to see my face again no 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 madam no madam so in the next session i will give some uh, small uh, uh, activities please interact with me okay yeah. okay ma'am thank you okay fine ಏನ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದು ನಾನು